Hey everyone and welcome to the studio. In this video I'm going to talk to you about signing your work and I'm actually going to show you a few different ways that you can sign your work. Now I did do a video a few years ago where I showed a simplified version of this but uh, over the years I've kind of changed up my signature and it actually does depend on what the piece is and how I sign it. And I know that might not make any sense to you right now but you'll see as we go through this class what I'm talking about. Now why do you want to sign your work? I feel like you don't even need to ask that question but the fact is if you make pottery you want people to know you made it so you need to sign your work. That's just the end of it and especially if you are in a clay center where there's other people making pots and you're gonna make something, you're gonna put it in the kiln they're going to bisque fire, you're going to get it back and you're going to be like, oh, did I make this? Or did she make this? Or did he make this? You don't know what you made. You will not remember. You might be thinking when you're making that form, oh, this is my baby. I know this is mine. I will never forget the way this gorgeous mug looks. And then they unload the kiln and there are 20 mugs people made and you can't pick your sweet baby out from everybody else's. Don't let that happen. Sign your work. So I'm going to show you how to sign your work on wetware, meaning as you're making it. I'm going to show you how to sign your work on leather hard pieces. So if you forget to sign it or you want to do a different type of signature, I'll show you that. I'm also going to show you the, oops, I forgot to sign it way to sign pieces. And also I use the, the oops, I forgot to sign it way for signing pieces like this casserole dish because I don't want to carve into the bottom or stamp a baking dish. And there's a reason for that. And I'm going to explain that to you too. So come along with me and learn. Let's see, how many different ways am I going to show you? One, two, three, four, five. Five different ways to sign your work. All right, so let's talk about these five different ways that you can sign your work. And of course, there are more ways than that, but I'm just going to go over the ones that I use here in my studio. So here we have some pieces, and the first one I'm going to show you is stamping your work. And why would you want to stamp your work? Well, you know, your stamp, if you make your own, there's mine, can be very unique and it can be personal to you. Now, this one here, which is actually this stamp here, uh, I hand carved this. So I made this little bisque, well it wasn't bisque, it, I made this leather hard stamp that I then carved my initials, JP for Jessica Putnam Phillips. I could have put a, like two P's on there or a PP or like two, I don't know the number two, but that just seemed a little redundant to have JPP because you know Jessica Putnam Phillips. So I just went with that JP like that. And you might be noticing here when you're looking at these that Oh, it's backwards. Well, you have to make letters backwards because you're going to stamp it in and you want it to read correctly. So I went with this diamond shape. I really liked it. I also think it looks like a kite sort of flying away. I don't know. I was, anyhow, this, there's been many, many versions of my stamp and this is the one I use a lot now because it's actually closest to my original stamp when I first started making pottery years ago. So I just like that kind of nostalgia of it. Now you can have stamps made, so I could have one that says Clay Share or my whole name right now, or even I could write my signature and you can send it in. Companies will make stamps for you. And I think it's like claystamps.com actually. So I don't know for sure and I'm not endorsing them, but yeah, that might be it, right? So when do you use this? Well, let's turn this back over. If you look at this piece right here, you'll see there is a lot of texture on the bottom it's kind of hard to sign your name anywhere through those little poppies. Like, where would I write my name? I really can't. And I don't want to leave it without texture. Now I could, it could be a smooth bottom with no texture and then that changes the way I sign it. But this one, I want the texture to be there. And I do that on a lot of my pieces that have texture all over it. So by stamping, it's just easy because you can stamp right on top. And when do you stamp it? Well, you need to stamp it while it's still pretty soft, either leather hard or a little softer. And so for this mug here, this particular one, this is a hand-built mug. So when I'm making it, and you guys have probably watched my How to Make a Mug class, and if you haven't watched that, go watch that video, because I explain how to hand-build a mug. This is actually the bottom. I use a circle cookie cutter, and I have to recut that. That's a little uneven, but I will take care of that later. So I have this great southwestern pattern. That's one of the newest designs from my line of textured rolling pins. And I want to keep that beautiful texture on the bottom. So I'm just going to take my stamp and I'm going to find a spot in here that I think my stamp, ooh, right here. Here's a little, 
here's a little triangly area. So I'm gonna take that little triangly area right there and I'm gonna put my stamp on it, just like this. Line it up. Now this works for me because that's my stamp, right? Right in there. Now I have that beautiful stamp that Let's see, can we focus on it? There we go, ta-da! So that'll be there always, and I've signed it. And then I make the rest of the mug and you know attach the walls and add the volume and all that stuff, but the signing is done. So there's no way I, anybody could say that I made that mug because I would say, uh, no, you didn't because that's my stamp. And if someone else makes my stamp, I would be very sad, but they probably won't. And even if they use the same sort of design and have the same initials, um, it wouldn't be mine. Now. Again, if you had one made that was your signature, spelt out, well, there's no way anybody could confuse it, right? So that's a good way to do it. Now, what if you've thrown a piece on the wheel and you want to stamp it? I'm glad you asked. Well, I have a piece right here where I can show you. So this is a carved piece that I made. And if you look right there, there it is, stamp. So I like to stamp my wheel thrown pieces if I stamp them on the bottom by where the handle attaches if there's a handle. If there's not a handle, I just put it sort of at near the bottom, right in there. And so when it's leather hard, after I've trimmed it and after I've attached a handle, if I'm attaching a handle, I would just go in with my stamp. And sometimes you might want to put your hand inside the support and then you just go stamp like that. Ta-da, done. This is actually a very special piece because I signed it and stamped it. It's double. And actually this is the demo one I'm gonna show you how I carve my signature. So that's stamping and if you do nothing else you should make your own stamp and stamp your pieces. That's the simplest, easiest way to sign your work. So let's move on from stamping. The next way to do it is again using leather hard pieces if you want to go ahead and, and put a signature on the bottom like this. So here's a cup I made and this signature here is just my name carved in it and what I did is I put black under glaze down first now this is Speedball, black under glaze. Speedball does not stick to your shelves, but this does have a raised foot, so I'm not worried about that. It's not touching the shelf, but if it was, it wouldn't be a problem. And that's safe to cone six. I've never tested it at cone 10, so if you're watching this and you fired a cone 10, do a little test to make sure. But I'm gonna show you how I do this. This is really easy. And I will have the list of tools and materials in the class description written down for you all. So don't worry about that. But I'm not gonna take the time to go through each and everything I use like in a separate video because that's just too tedious. And I want this to be fun and I want you guys to just go do it, right? So here we have our banding wheel. This is a Shimpo banding wheel. Oh my goodness. If you don't have a Shimpo banding wheel, look at this. Just spin, spin, spin. It just keeps going forever and ever. They're so, so good. Um, I'm not sponsored by Shimpo. I just really like their banding wheel. So let's take a cup that I've made right here. And the bottom, it's leather hard, definitely leather hard. And the bottom's trimmed and ready to go. And I've got some black underglaze. And the brush I'm using is called a Sumi, S-U-M-I. And they're also used for calligraphy, but I like to use them for signing the bottoms of my pots. So put it on the banding wheel and then the brush just does the work. Dab in, get a little more underglaze. Just like that, right up to the edge. And the banding wheel makes it look so professional. Look at that. It's a nice, it's a nice circle. <laughs> <laughs> and then you want this to dry just till it's not shiny. See how it's shiny. So let it dry. And the magic of uh, television. <laughs> I made one earlier and it's ready to go. So once you have your underglaze on, now remember this is leather hard. You can actually see it drying before your eyes. Do you see how it's a mottled surface? Meaning light and dark splotchy spots. That's because some areas are drier than others. And so you're getting that change in tone. And I'm just going to sign my name to it. Now, I like to do this kind of pretty little pattern. Sometimes I do a swirly thing. It, it can be just your name. And for carving, I like to use these diamond core tools. This is their L3, small football on this end, large football on this end. But you can use any of their tools. They're all really great. And now let's come on in mm -hmm. and I'm going to sign this. So just you write your name, you're basically scratching. You could use a needle tool to do this, 
but I find that a needle tool is not always the nicest thing to hold and always doesn't doesn't always give you really great signature so that's just the name and then you want to brush this off I usually have a stiff bristle brush I'm just gonna brush it off over here off camera so I just brush that off with like a chip brush or something like that and then you can see the name oh it's signed yay but I can't do just that like that's for me that's not a possibility and if you ever have any of my pieces um, you know if I've done the black underglaze like this you know something else is happening so this little leaf motif I always kind of love to use so let's put this on and then we're just gonna brush that off too sorry I had to I have my bucket of water off to the side and I'm brushing it off so there if your name is Jessica Putnam Phillips you're set so that's my signature on something like this using the black underglaze of course you could use any color underglaze you want I like black because you know it's neutral and it looks good no matter what color you want to use so this gorgeous mug that is from um, well I made it but the glazes are made by Clayscapes Pottery and that cream oh my goodness this is not supposed to be about glazes but we must pause for a second and just gush about the yumminess happening when you dip their cream over any of their other glazes pretty much it just looks amazing but the black goes so I could have used purple but I don't always know what color I'm glazing a piece when I'm at the leather hard stage so by going with black I've covered all my bases so that's carving your name now you could just carve your name into the piece without the black underglaze and then you'd have a line there and you'd so you'd be able to see it it would be textured but it isn't as easy to read as this like this right here you see that my J is a little lost in the leaves but it's okay I know what it says I know that's mine and that's the important part so this is gonna sit off to the side now let's move on to the next way of signing that is this so when I do Mishima inlay on a piece like I did on this little creamer, I really like to do an inlay for my signature. So if you look, this isn't painted, you can actually feel it. So it's inlaid in the clay. So I wanna go ahead and prep this. And the way that I do this is I will take the piece I'm gonna be working on. It's gonna be the bottom of this cup right here. Back on the banding wheel. And then I put a layer of wax down first. And the wax I'm using here and again, this is, I am not being compensated for anything. This is just the wax I like. It's a water-based wax resist, and this is called Mr. Mark's Wax On Resist. And it's made by the ceramic shop. Now, the bottle I'm using right now is purple because it's an older bottle. They've changed the color, it's now pink. So, if you're buying this or looking to find this, and you can't, or like, but her wax was purple. I can't find the purple wax. No, it's pink now. It's prettier, maybe. I don't know, I really like the purple color. But now it's pink, so keep that in mind if you're looking to get that wax. But any water-based wax will work that dries hard, not a gummy wax. Some, some companies out there make waxes that are water-based that are gummy. You need to be able to carve through, and if it's a gummy wax, it'll, it won't carve, it'll just mush. Yeah. That's a technical term, just mush. So again, we are gonna take, and I'm using a foam brush, and the wax resist, and I'm just gonna apply it to the whole bottom. And I'm actually waxing the bottom completely, just because I wanna make sure I don't get any black underglaze anywhere that I don't want it. And these brushes, you can use them over and over, just rinse them out when you're done. So the foam brushes last forever. Just, just wash them out when you're done. All right, so, that has to set up and again do you see how it's kind of a purpley shiny and then here's the dry one so before after before after so you you want the after part <laughs> same thing with carving i'm going to be using that diamond core tool and then just go right in and carve but you want to make sure you go deep enough that you're really getting in there and remember how to spell your name <laughs> <laughs> that would be a bad thing if you forget your name. And so I just etch it in. And then again, brushing off the little crumbs off to the side in a bucket of water because I don't, I don't want the clay crumbs everywhere. 
so I'm not showing that part, but I don't think I don't think you guys need me to. And then for this one, I'm doing a little fancy flower. Well, it's not that fancy because it's a daisy, but you know. And then some curly cues scrolling off. You don't have to do the curly cues because you know that might not be your thing. I really like them because I'm kind of that way. So we're just gonna wrap this around. Put that one there. All right, let's clean this off again. So I'm just gonna take it over here and clean it off with a brush. So you don't want all those little burrs of clay on there. So we've cleaned it off and you can see right there the etching that I've done, but we really wanna highlight that. And to do that, back with our friend, the black underglaze, we're gonna grab that. Actually, I should turn this upside down so you can see this at the same time. Maybe. Will it stay? There we go. As long as it stays, we're good. All right, so let's go ahead and take our black underglaze. I usually thin this down a little bit. 75% underglaze, 25% water. You don't need to have it as thick as I have it. It's, it's a little thick, but that's okay. So just rub it in like ink. It's pretty messy. And see, it's really shiny. So that has to set up, um, not till it's completely dry. Usually I let it set up uh, about two, three minutes. What tends to happen is I'll have a bunch of these ready to carve and I will go ahead and do all my carving and then I'll put the black on. And by the time I finish the last one, I can go back to the first one and, and remove the excess because what we're creating here is basically a Mishima inlay on the bottom. That's all we're doing, that's it. Nothing fancy. So to, to go ahead and do the next step, we want a bucket of water and a sponge. This is just a regular old pottery sponge. I'm gonna dip it in my bucket, squeeze it out really well. I hear from so many people that they try this technique and not just on the bottoms, but actually carving on the sides. And what happens is they actually wipe the color out of their lines. You need to make sure your sponge is really dry. You really gotta Mm, squeeze it out good, really good. You basically want it barely damp because if it's really wet, that water will go into your lines and push out your underglaze and you do not want that. So let's see. Now also we're gonna wipe and as we wipe, we're gonna do wipe and then I'm gonna turn it over and wipe. You always wanna use a clean area of the sponge every time you wipe. So ready? Wipe, see, dirty there. So now we switched over to the clean, wipe, clean down here, we're gonna use that. Usually I can get, there we go. All right, so we have our signature on the bottom like that and that's it, it's done. I don't have to do anything else. Now, these diamond core tools really like drier clay to carve into, so if you're carving and your lines aren't as sharp as you would like them to be, just wait till your piece is a little drier. And as far as what else you have to do, nothing. This is going in the bisque, the wax will burn away, and then that's all. You'll, you'll have a black outline of your signature. I'm gonna put that over here with this one. And I sometimes get fancy and put little flowers on it, and sometimes I fill in the letters. I don't really do that much anymore because, you know, it's, it's a little fiddly. But sometimes, sometimes I still do that. Okay, so that's three ways down. We got two more to go. So what, what could be next? What else could we do? Well, I'm gonna move the banding wheel because we're not really gonna need that now. So, the, uh, there's a couple more. One um, I'm gonna do now is this right here. Let's see which one. This one right here. So, I was talking about how on casserole dishes, I don't really like to do the carving. And that's because with casserole dishes, they're gonna, get, or any bakeware, they're gonna get hot and cold, they're gonna have a lot of thermal expansion and there's gonna be a lot of stress on the pieces. So ideally you want the piece to be even thickness on the walls and on the bottom. And if you start carving away the bottom, you're changing that thickness. It's not gonna be even anymore. So I really don't even put feet on my casseroles. You see how that's just flat? Just flat, that's it. Smooth, flat, bottom, that's all. And this one I signed and dated I don't usually date my work, but you know, if they bring me flowers, I will. <laughs> no, that's 
me being goofy. All right, so how did I sign this? Well, again, it's black, it's under glaze, and um, I'm just gonna go ahead and I have a pot off to the side right here. So this is already done. This one is one, this is a hand-built casserole, and the other one I'm gonna show you is a, a square casserole that's thrown. So this is the hand-built square casserole. And I'm just gonna turn it over so I can move this out of the way. There's a lot of pots on my work surface right now. Put that over there. And I'm gonna sign this. Now, using the underglaze again, and I'm gonna put the underglaze in a little dish. So let's just pour some out. Bloop. You don't need much, but you don't want it full strength. So I'm gonna take my sponge and I'm just gonna squeeze a few drops of water. You wanna thin this down to a nice flowing ink consistency. Uh, maybe half and half. And I'm using a small, let's see, number zero round sort of liner brush here. Let me clean it off. So this came in a, a pack of craft brushes right here, this guy. Just, there it is, round, zero. <laughs> but you could use a liner brush, anything that will let you paint letters nicely. I find that the Sumi brush is a little too big and thick, so that's not the best one. So I'm mixing this down. See, it's thinning down nicely. And then sign your name. And it's just... Now, I find that I have to go back to the palette a lot with this technique because this brush doesn't hold a lot. And you gotta be careful. See, I was a little thick on the beginning of that S. Because if you go too thick, you can smear your letters or obscure them. They don't really look like the letter you're going for. So you just write your name. Just like this. And this is great because if you didn't sign it before, you can always put your signature on now. And again, this black underglaze doesn't uh, stick to your kiln shelf. So that's signed. That's it. Easy. Simple. Not very fancy, but it, it, gets the it gets the name there, right? So there's that way. And then the last way, which is actually the way I usually sign things like the casserole dish I just showed you. And also this is what I call my, oops, I forgot to sign it. And you don't realize it till you get to glazing is this way right here. So it's more of a script signature written pretty fast. And what I use for this is just one of these bottles. So this is just a little plastic squeeze bottle that has a very small metal tip. So it's like a slip trail bottle, but it's not really. It's a crafting bottle. Sometimes they're called a glue bottle. Um, used sometimes in quilting for basting, whatever that is. I don't quilt. So, but I just have heard people say, that's a basting bottle. I always thought basting was when you were like roasting a turkey, but apparently it's quilting too. Yeah. So the way these work is you fill them up with underglaze. I use black here and I put a little water in it. Not quite half and half, but pretty close. Half water, half underglaze. And once you have it in there, shaky, shaky, shake it up. And then the piece you're going to sign, let me get it. Oh my gosh, it's a giant, it's so big. I don't, I, I don't know if it can even fit on the view here, the camera. Here we go. We have to zoom out. Look, look how big this is. That is a giant, this is my mac and cheese casserole. I don't joke when I make mac and cheese. Like there is no kidding at all. When we're having mac and cheese, we are having it. Mac and cheese is on the menu. You're gonna get plenty. So this is also great for ziti or anything else. This is a, a wheel thrown casserole, square casserole, and I made this in my class on clayshare.com. Yes, I did. All right, so this is the, oops, I forgot to sign. So once you have your bisque pieces um, wiped and ready to go, and you know you forgot to sign it, or you want to, now this I'm signing this way on purpose, you're gonna take your little bottle, I'm gonna squeeze it out to make sure we have a good flow, and we do, because if it's way too runny, what happens is you get this smear, this watery smear. So just go ahead and sign it. And you might want to practice. Here's a sheet of paper. You might want to practice signing with this. Yep, that's my name. There we go. So 
You might want to practice a bit so that you know how it works before you put it on the pottery. So let's go ahead and sign. See? Blop! Do you see that? All right. It's not the end of the world. Hold on. We're going to go ahead and scrub it off. Um, sometimes the underglaze will try to stain. Look at that. Whoops! That happens. It does. It really does. It's life, right? So now what we're going to do? <laughs> we're going to turn the pot because I'm going to sign it, but I'm not going to sign where it's wet. If I wasn't in a hurry, I would just let this dry if that's where I still wanted to sign it. All right, let's go ahead. Um, you have to go fast, basically, is where I'm trying to get. Ta-da! Wait, let's get fancy. All right, there you have it. Jessica Putnam Phillips with a little swirly do on the bottom. And so you just let this set. Now, if you look, you can see the underglaze is still shiny and it's slightly raised. That will be absorbed into the clay. The clay will be absorbing the underglaze and it will just absorb down in and it won't be a problem. And then make sure this little bottle came with a little pin or a little cap in it. You want to make sure if you're using these bottles that you put the top back on it because if not what happens is the little nozzle will fill with underglaze and then you'll go to use it and it will be dried in there and you won't be able to actually use it. And I don't know where I put my pin. Here I am thinking, don't lose your pin, Jess, and I did. All right, so that's number five. And again, this is the oops way too, because if you forget to sign a piece, you can just grab the little bottle and just scribble your name on the bottom right as you're about to glaze it. Just go ahead and do that and then wax over it once it's dry. All right, so there you have it. Five, five different ways to sign your work. Now, remember I showed you stamping and here it is on the finished, here it is on my wet clay. Remember, if you're gonna do stamping, you wanna make sure you stamp on leather hard pieces. Don't try to stamp on bisque wear, because what will happen is as you're pushing in, you'll actually break your pottery. So only do it on leather hard, or a little softer than leather hard, maybe a tiny bit drier than leather hard, but never on dry. It'll always break, and then you'll be sad, and I'll have to be sad for you, and we don't want that. And then the other way I showed you how to sign is where you put your black underglaze on and carve through it. Of course, you could skip the underglaze step and just go ahead and carve your name in. That's perfectly fine. So if you don't have the underglaze and you want to carve, you can just use a needle tool and carve in. We've all done that. But it's not the best way to sign your name. This is a much more elegant and easy to read way. So here it is on a piece before it's fired and here it is on a finished piece. So you can see the black doesn't really change, it stays there. But it just looks really nice because someone will be like, oh, I wonder who made this? Oh, you have a Jessica Putnam Phillips mug, lucky duck. And then the other way, which is kind of similar to carving on the, on the underglaze is with the inlay signature. And that's what I do when I'm doing a hand carved Mishima design that has a lot of inlay because I want to carry that design across like I and sometimes not all the time but sometimes when I'm carving a mug I will actually carve the sides and then I'll actually carve down onto the foot so the design carves all the way down and wraps around onto the bottom those I don't do very much they're crazy and they're actually fabulous, but I don't do them. I should do more of those. Why haven't I? Uh, time. That would be the reason. So that's a great way to sign, right? And then the other two I showed, which I did on these big casseroles, are the way to paint on or write on underglaze. So I have this one where I actually painted on the underglaze, which is fine. I feel like this is a little messy and it takes a lot of time. Plus, you've got to squeeze out your underglaze into another container, thin it down, put your brush in, keep dipping back and forth. That takes a bit of time. This way, you saw me write with that little bottle and it was just easy, fast, done. You just, as fast as you can write with a pen, you can write with that little bottle filled with underglaze. So that's a great way to sign. And here it is on a finished glazed piece. So you get that really nice, easy to read because I'm using a light colored clay with black. Now here's the thing. If you use a dark clay, so you're thinking, oh, that's great. If you're using light clay, yeah, well, guess what? If you're using a dark clay, use white. What? 
yes, use white underglaze and you can still write your name on it and it will still show. So there you go. I solved that problem for you too. You didn't even know you had it. All right, so I hope this gives you some ideas for signing your work and please, whatever you do, just make sure you do sign your work because that's really important. You want to know you made it. You can date it if you want so that you can keep track of what you made over the years and you can see the progression of your awesomeness and pottery skills or just sign your name. That's, that's what I do. I don't want to look at stuff from 10 years ago and go, oh my goodness, I made that 10 years ago. <laughs> All right, well, again, thank you so much, you guys, for joining me here. Now, if you like this video, give it a big old thumbs up. If you don't subscribe, why not? Make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell. That'll let you know when I have new videos on YouTube. And if you want even more pottery awesomeness, come over to clayshare.com. That's right, there are over 200 and almost 50 classes. I, personally, me, have 23 more than 2,300, 2,300 videos. That's right, there's a lot of videos there with me. So come check it out. All right, everyone, thank you so much for hanging out here with me, and I'll catch you next time in the studio.